It's kind of strange to think that the original version of Kingdom Hearts 2, the one that most of us played on PlayStation 2 all of those years ago, is kind of considered obscure and almost a rarity nowadays, as the version of Cage 2 that we play with in the remixes is of course Final Mix. This is the extended definitive version of the game, released back in 2007 exclusive to Japan, and for the rest of the world it wouldn't be until 2014 with the release of Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix on PlayStation 3 that the rest of the world would finally be able to experience KH2 Final Mix for the very first time. Now if you guys grew up playing Kingdom Hearts 2, no doubt at one point or another you ended up searching Kingdom Hearts 2 on YouTube and managed to stumble across Final Mix exclusive features. I remember vividly as a kid doing this and initially being confused about how is this person accessing the Cavern of Remembrance? Or how do I fight the other organization members? Where did they get these two new Keyblades from? Yeah, I literally thought that the version of my game was either bugged, or I had to put in some kind of cheat code, or maybe I was doing something wrong, and ended up falling down the Final Mix rabbit hole, almost becoming semi-what obsessed with Final Mix, like it was this uh, rarity to somehow obtain. I obsessed so much over Final Mix that I ended up selling a countless amount of my games that I had acquired over the years to save up enough money to finally buy a PC that was capable of running PCSX2. Downloaded a Japanese KH2 Final Mix ISO, and away I went. This was in 2012, I was finally able to experience the Final Mix experience. And uh, thanks to the community too, uh, there was an English patch that was available for this ISO, meaning that I could actually experience it and know what I was doing. And I tell you what, that experience was simply joyous. Years of watching footage of the Cavern of Remembrance, seeing the lingering will, now I could finally have this all to myself. Recently I was feeling a little bit nostalgic and wanted to dip my toes back into the vanilla version of Kingdom Hearts 2, as literally it's been since probably about 2011, 2000. 2010 since I had played that very original version of the game. And to be honest, it's a little bit weird considering that so many more people have finally decided to play Kingdom Hearts, knowing that the version of KH2 that they'll play for the very first time will in fact be Final Mix. They do not know what the original fans had to go through with the very first version of the game. So I wanted to make this video comparing the original version of KH2 to what is the definitive Final Mix version, uh, so that people that have only just recently dipped into the Kingdom Hearts franchise over the past few years know what the original version looks like. Aside from the major new features that Final Mix introduced, like Mushroom 13, the data fight's lingering will, there are some smaller changes here that you guys might be unaware of. So let's begin with the obvious stuff, the major new additions. Final Mix introduced a lot of stuff into the game's post-game content. Kingdom Hearts 2 was kind of lacking in post-game content in sort of similar fashion to what ended up happening with Kingdom Hearts 3 before Remind, there wasn't really a lot to do once you had finished the game. In vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2, there was the Sephiroth secret boss fight, as well as the Arena Cups in Olympus Coliseum. But aside from that, Kingdom Hearts 2 was pretty dry in the ways of post-game content, and for people that were complaining about Kingdom Hearts 3's post-game content, makes me think that you didn't experience the original version of Kingdom Hearts 2. It was sort of even worse. Kingdom Hearts 3 certainly did have a little bit more to do at the end of the game compared to vanilla KH2, and Kingdom Hearts 1 also suffered from this as well. There really wasn't much post-game content until the Final Mix version, which added more things to do at the end of the game. Final Mix, though, solved this problem and added in a lot of new content. First things first is the Mushroom 13. 13 different Mushroom Heartless were located around the world, which acted as their own individual mini-games. These would require all sorts of different techniques to use, like certain drive forms to be upgraded using growth abilities, using magics, in order to complete the said mini-game or task that the Mushroom requires you to do. There was a certain score that you'd have to achieve to satisfy the Mushroom and complete that one specific task. Once completing all 13, you were given the Winner's Proof Keyblade, one of the new Keyblades added into Final Mix. These little guys would also give you some prizes upon completion as well, and the better the prize, depending on the higher the score. The main prizes that you'd obtain from these Mushrooms would be new Starves and Shields for Donald and Goofy, known as Plane, 
precious and premium mushroom for Donald and joyous, majestic and ultimate mushroom for Goofy. The Cabin of Remembrance is definitely the biggest new addition to Final Mix which adds in a whole brand new high level area into the game within Hollow Bastion. After the battle for Hollow Bastion halfway through the game, a hole in the side of the castle then appears which leads down into a cavern system underneath the castle. This adds in the highest level area into the game with enemies that are extremely powerful. Although you could access the cavern halfway throughout the game, it wouldn't be recommended to go there until you've at least finished the game and have leveled up a bit, as the enemies there are incredibly powerful, more so than the ones that you come across in the world that never was, making for a very nice piece of post-game content, much needed considering Vanilla's was very lackluster. You'll also need to level up all of your dry forms aside from limit form to obtain the growth abilities, as certain areas of the cavern are inaccessible without having high jump, aerial dodge, quick step, and glide. There was also the addition of 14 new boss fights. The 13 organization members, harder versions of the ones you had fought throughout Kingdom Hearts 2, and the ones that appeared throughout Chain of Memories, on top of also the Lingering Will. The Lingering Will added on to the secret movie that played at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, the armored figure that wielded a Keyblade, and was the new super boss of the game. Although vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2 had Sephiroth, who was definitely a formidable foe, this became the new standard in super boss difficulty expectation, and was by far the hardest boss encounter the Kingdom Hearts franchise had seen probably all the way up until the recent Yuzora that was added through Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. For each of these three new major additions, the Mushroom 13, Data Fights, and Lingering Will, you'd be awarded a proof, an item that grants Sora a different colored crown the more proofs that you have, giving a true sense of achievement and reward upon completing such hard tasks. It was these additions that really set the bar and expectation for what post-game content should be in a Kingdom Hearts game. This is probably why so many people were disappointed with the post-game content of Kingdom Hearts 3, considering that it only had the Fantastic 7, a very similar minigame setup to the Mushroom 13, Dark Inferno, which was a very disappointing secret boss fight, and finishing up the rest of the lucky emblems that you missed out going through the story, left a lot of us scratching our head as to why what we saw in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix was not present in the base game of Kingdom Hearts 3. There were several new additional cutscenes that were added into Kingdom Hearts 2's story, which gave us more context and perspective from Organization 13. There was one cutscene in particular that further ties Kingdom Hearts 2 to Birth by Sleep, which we wouldn't get an answer as to what the armor is about that Xemnas goes and visits, as well as who or what the Lingering Will is, until the release of Birth by Sleep in 2010, three years after the release of Final Mix. Building upon Kingdom Hearts 2's secret movie to tease Birth by Sleep, the Final Mix version certainly added more inklings, teasing the next major Kingdom Hearts game to release in 2010. Talking about new additions to the story, there was a new boss fight that was added into the world that never was, a boss fight against Roxas, and yeah, I remember seeing this back in the day thinking, wait, why didn't my version throw me into a fight against Roxas? I just got a simple cutscene. Base game Kingdom Hearts 2 would just simply show you a cutscene with no fight in between, but Final Mix gave you the real deal, and this was certainly one of the coolest coolest fights in the entire game, if not the entire series, and certainly being one of the hardest story fights you'll have to go through. Successfully defeating Roxas will award you with a brand new Keyblade to become one. On top of the mushroom weapons for Donald and Goofy, there were also some new weapons that were added too. There were now plus versions of certain weapons throughout the game, so for the likes of Shaman's Relic and Akashic Record, which were rare drops from the Necromancer and Room Master Heartless, there were now plus versions. For both Save the Queen and Save the King, there were now also plus versions of these weapons too, which were neat recolors and stronger variations. To give you a bit of a taste test and entree into what you'll be getting yourself into in regards to the data fights, there were easier versions of the Chain of Memories organization members via absent silhouettes, these orbs of darkness that could be found in specific worlds. And upon completion, you'd be awarded a brand new synthesis recipe to create some new stuff, another brand new shield and stuff for Donald and Goofy, Frozen Pride, as well as Centurion, both also have plus versions, as well as new equipment and accessories, the Shock Charm, Full Bloom, and Shadow Archive, all of which have plus versions. There was also a brand new puzzle minigame that was added into Final Mix to add even more game time onto Kingdom Hearts 2's base game. 
Crowns could now be found scattered throughout worlds and you'd be able to assemble a puzzle within Jiminy's journal. There were several of these and a bunch of cool new rewards that were given to you upon completion. There was a brand new accessory, the executive's ring, and a brand new equipment piece known as Grand Ribbon. Kingdom Hearts 2 also only ever came with three difficulty modes and it wasn't finally until the introduction of KH2 Final Mix where finally we get a fourth new difficulty which has become a staple point in Kingdom Hearts games ever since. This is known as critical mode, as people were wanting a harder difficulty mode beyond that of Proud. There was also a brand new drive form that was added into Final Mix, which was Limit Form, throwing Sora back into his Kingdom Hearts 1 outfit color palette, allowing Sora to utilize a bunch of attacks from Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix. Aside from the form being one of the absolute best in the game, this introduced the growth ability Dodge Roll. Yes, Sora's classic move, finally, in Kingdom Hearts 2, as Kingdom Hearts 2 didn't have Dodge Roll. And I'll tell you, it's absolutely rough going back to Kingdom Hearts 2 vanilla and not having Dodge Roll. It's one thing that I still cannot believe to this day, that Square Enix didn't have Dodge Roll from the very get-go in KH2, as this is literally one of Sora's staple point moves. This kind of means that if you want a Dodge Roll in Kingdom Hearts 2, you're pretty much forced to level up Wisdom Form in in order to get Quick Step, which is vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2's dodge roll. The annoying thing about this though is Quick Step really isn't as versatile as dodge roll, while it certainly is a good evasion move. It's nowhere near as instantaneous as dodge roll, as Quick Step's animation lasts for a lot longer. What was so good about Limit Form though is that Sora could utilize this form independently. He didn't need the party members to be present. There are a few times throughout Kingdom Hearts 2 where party members aren't present in Sora's by himself so it was kind of strange to have the drive gauge sitting there without it being able to be utilized. The introduction of Limit Form finally fixed this issue. The original version of Kingdom Hearts 2 had a max drive gauge of 7 and this was changed in Final Mix to be increased to 9. The title screen art was different for Final Mix. It was Sora and Roxas sitting next to each other eating a sea salt ice cream, whereas the original version had just the art of Sora standing in the ocean with a sea salt ice cream in his mouth. And man, I have missed this art so daily. I've almost forgotten what this has looked like. It has literally been years since I've seen it. I 100% prefer the OG artwork to that of the Final Mix one, obviously because it stays consistent with the art that is on display for the title screen of the mainline Kingdom Hearts games. It was the same for Kingdom Hearts 1 with Sora standing in the ocean, and the same again for Kingdom Hearts 3 facing away, walking towards the ocean. That still hits so hard once you've wrapped up the story of Kingdom Hearts 3. My god, Square, you knew exactly what you were doing. What I do wish here is that uh, at first, before finishing a save file of Kingdom Hearts 2, it would display that OG artwork, because now for anyone that jumps into Kingdom Hearts 2 for the very first time, They'll likely obviously be playing the HD Remix version, it'll only ever display that Final Mix art, and they'll never see that original artwork. So yeah, I do wish it was a setup where once you complete a save file for Kingdom Hearts 2, it then displays the Final Mix art of Sora and Roxas on the title screen, which honestly, from even the story standpoint, would kind of make sense, with both Sora and Roxas kind of being reunited at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2. But it was absolute bliss to finally see this artwork after all of these years. A lot of the textures for the Final Mix version of the game were redone to improve quality. The best example shown here is probably Sora. When we compare the hair of Sora from the vanilla version to Final Mix, you can definitely see a difference. Final Mix versions is definitely more detailed. The details on Sora's outfit also appear more defined in the Final Mix version too, and the same can be said for almost all of the models throughout the Final Mix version as well. For some reason, there was also a color change to the bottom of Sora's shoes for the Final Mix version. In the original vanilla version, the bottom is more of a light gray, whereas in the Final Mix version, the bottom of his shoes are a darker gray, almost black. Dry forms also took on a bit of a change as well in the sense of their color. The color in the vanilla versions appear to be a lot brighter, whereas in the Final Mix version, it looks like Square Enix darkened the colors and applied some shading to make it look like proper pieces of clothing. Both Master Form as well as Velo Form stick out a lot due to this being very bright colors. You'll probably also notice too that the inside of Sora's shoe is now a darker gray compared to the lighter gray that's going on uh, for the inside of the shoe for Vanilla. I guess that's to better match the 
change in the shoe color at the bottom. I know we're talking about Sora's shoes, this is ridiculous. I think for specifically Master Form, I actually prefer the lighter color at the bottom of the shoes. For some reason with that yellow color palette, it works really well. However, Wisdom Form is a bit of a special case here in the ways of its changes. There are a lot of changes going on here. So you'll first notice that the overall color of the outfit has been changed slightly. In vanilla, it wasn't actually a blue outfit, but more lean towards kind of a purpley violet type color. And that's been fixed here in the Final Mix version, where the outfit appears to be just a straight up blue. You'll also notice that Sora's gloves are completely different as well. For vanilla, they are black with bright yellow straps, but in the Final Mix version, the gloves are blue with orangey yellow straps. For some reason, the color of the straps also coincide with the color of uh, inside of Sora's shoes, which is really strange. So for vanilla, the inside of the shoe is a sort of greeny yellow type color and the inside of the shoe for Final Mix is more of that orangey yellow color that appears on the glove straps. And I have no idea why they did this, but they decided to change the pattern on Sora's sleeve, so for Vanilla, it's the icon that displays wisdom form, and for Final Mix, it's just simply blue flames, I guess, to better coincide with the blue flames on the pants. Probably the biggest change that you'll notice with Final Mix, though, is the color palette swap towards most of the Heartless. This is a staple point feature in a Final Mix version of a Kingdom Hearts game. The same was applied to Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix and Birth by Sleep Final Mix. It was really nostalgic and kinda strange going back through the vanilla version seeing all of those original color palettes. It's really weird to think about, but you can almost consider the original color palettes of the Heartless in Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, as well as the color palettes of the Unverse in Birth by Sleep to now be the Final Mix uh, sort of rare color palettes. Uh, before, of course, Final Mix was accessible by the rest of the world aside from Japan, it was a true rarity and quite a neat thing to see the changes towards all of the color palettes of the Heartless. But now they've become the standard color palettes, as Final Mix is the standard version of Kingdom Hearts you'll play. So it's almost like it's kind of swapped around with the OG color palettes being the rarity and the Final Mix color palettes being the standard. Some of the Final Mix color palettes I do prefer over the original, but in some cases I do prefer the original color palettes, like the Assault Rider. I do not like the pinky purple Assault Rider. The black and red look so much better. Also the OG color palette for the soldier and the large body, just the standard black is so much better than the sort of brownie beige that's going on. It was actually this very change that inspired me to uh, make this video talking about all of the changes that Final Mix brought through with what was present in the original version because nowadays when someone plays Kingdom Hearts 2, what is going to be the way that they look at the Heartless color palettes will be the normal to them, but for all of us OGs, we know that that's actually considered the secondary color palette to all of these famous Heartless. To be fair, I really do wish that there was an option in the HD Remix versions of the game to allow you to switch between the original color palettes or the Final Mix color palettes. Though that being said, this would increase the already large file size of 1.5 plus 2.5 with it already being about 50 gigs to add in all of those additional textures just to give you the option to switch between them would kind of be a little bit unnecessary, but still, I gotta say, I've really missed these OG color palettes. There were also some new combo modifiers added into the Final Mix version, though what I'm happy with is the combo modifiers that were already in Vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2 when we look towards like the famous aerial finish or explosion were fine from the get-go, and I don't think Kingdom Hearts 2 suffers too much from missing out on those exclusive Final Mix combo modifiers. These were Flash Step, Vicinity Break, and Magnet Burst. I will say that the only one that I really missed going back through Vanilla was probably Magnet Burst. I think that Kingdom Hearts 2 was really needing an additional uh, aerial finish, a secondary one on top of aerial finisher. And Magnet Burst is just hands down probably the best aerial finisher in the game. But unlike Kingdom Hearts 3, which suffered so bad from its base game combo modifiers, where it was in a situation where it desperately needed a Final Mix type treatment in order to introduce a whole bunch of new combo modifiers to completely overhaul Sora's base combo, 
Kingdom Hearts 2 was just fine. Flash Step, Vicinity Break are also fantastic abilities that were sort of missed, but overall the only one that I really missed while going back through vanilla was without a doubt Magnet Burst. The order in which you obtain different abilities, HP increases, as well as new item slots and equipment slots have been sort of swapped around a little bit between the vanilla to Final Mix versions. Here's a few examples. In vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2, Sora learns Slapshot in Timeless River, however in the Final Mix version, this ability isn't acquired until right at the end of the game, in the last visit to Twilight Town just before the world that never was, when you're pitted against the Dusk Nobodies with Axel. Horizontal Slash is acquired in the vanilla version when you defeat the Hostile Program, the first boss in Space Paranoids, whereas in Final Mix, this ability isn't acquired until the second visit of Port Royal when you defeat the first Grim Reaper encounter on the ship. Probably the most mind-blowing one though, and this is like hands down one of the best Kingdom Hearts abilities of all time is the combo finisher Explosion. In the vanilla version you get this during Agrabah first visit when you defeat the Blizzard and Volcanic Lord. As most of you guys should know, you don't acquire this ability in Final Mix until pretty much right at the end of the game during the second visit of Space Paranoids after successfully completing the Solar Sailor encounter. So really, Explosion's only kind of useful in Final Mix for the end portions of the game, whereas in Vanilla, you can use Explosion for at least one half of the entire playthrough. I have to say, this kind of blew my mind and I actually did forget about this when going back through vanilla, but it was incredibly satisfying to have Explosion there for all of the second visits. The amount of HP that's increased for each get bonus on different encounters has been slightly altered as well. In Vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2, Donald would increase by 4 HP when defeating Shan Yu in the Land of Dragons, but for Final Mix, this is reduced to 3 HP. Defeating Demax in Hollow Bastion would increase Goofy's HP by 5 in Vanilla, but in Final Mix, this is reduced to 4. And so on and so forth. There's a lot of these HP slight alterations that are made throughout uh, between both vanilla to final mix. So overall you can see that the experience slightly differs uh, between obtaining certain stat bonuses as well as uh, acquiring abilities between both versions, giving for slightly different experiences. Treasures were also slightly changed in the Final Mix version too, with some of the loot just completely removed or just rearranged. Now, one thing I really did come across within the vanilla version was just how many high potions and uh, support items I was obtaining in general. Like, by Olympus Coliseum first visit, the very start of the game, I had about 17 high potions and was kind of thinking to myself, I swear usually, like within Final Mix, I don't have this many items uh, by the start of the game. And yeah, going through the treasures, I noticed that this was changed as well. To give an example, Halloween Town in the vanilla version has a total of five support items between high potions to mega potions to evas. Whereas in the Final Mix version, the only one support item you get in treasures is a mega potion, one singular support item. So treasures too also received a big change. A lot of these treasures were swapped out with uh, AP boosts due to the addition of new abilities or of course more synthesis items as there were more items to synthesize in Final Mix. I also believe too that Square Enix wanted to remove the acquirable amount of potions and ethers etc through treasure chests uh, throughout the game for Final Mix just because there were so many. There's little to like no reason to ever have to use money to buy items uh, when basically the treasure chests just load you up on support stuff. And speaking of Halloween Town, for Final Mix this world received a bit of a change. Sora, Donald and Goofy received Christmas themed outfits when in Christmas Town, whereas in Vanilla these weren't present and rather Sora, Donald and Goofy would just stay in the Halloween Town attire. Christmas Town also received some brand new music for Final Mix for when you're out of battle or in battle. It was really weird going back into Christmas Town in the Halloween Town outfits with the traditional Halloween Town music playing. There are some other smaller differences here between Vanilla to Final Mix, so let's go through those. Examining the mirrors within the wardrobe of the Mysterious Tower all give you references to the different drive forms throughout the game, and an additional one was added into Final Mix next to this piece of furniture 
Nightshare, which of course references Limit Form. Another really strange change between Vanilla and Final Mix is in the Vanilla version, if you destroy the fireworks in a room and then leave that room and re-enter it, the fireworks will respawn instantly. However, in the Final Mix version, this doesn't happen, rather it takes numerous room changes for those destroyed fireworks to respawn. Can't exactly explain why this change was made. In the vanilla version of Beast's Castle during the Undercroft scenario where you're having to light the lamps with Cogsworth and the gang, the bar depletes incredibly slow. This was changed in Final Mix so that the bar depletes a lot faster. Usually by lamp number 3 I have almost no time gauge left in Final Mix, but here in vanilla I had more than half the bar remaining. I suppose Square Enix did this to make the mini game a little bit more stressful. In Olympus Coliseum during the Pete scenario, the time limit was originally two minutes, but this was changed in the final mix to be one minute, 30 seconds. In Disney Castle, while protecting Minnie, enemies will drop prizes. However, this was changed in the final mix version so that they don't drop prizes. The same can also be said in Agrabah during the Sandswept Ruins scenario. Uh, enemies will drop prizes in the vanilla version, but again was changed in final mix. And speaking of Sandswept Ruins, the time limit here to get back to the monument after activating the switches was different in the vanilla version. It is 30 seconds rather than 45 seconds in Final Mix. The time limit to take down Demix's water figures was originally 10 seconds, but was increased to 13. Haha, <laughs> get it? Get your organization 13. Anyway, 13 seconds in Final Mix. And one last really strange change is, for some reason, Zigbar has a different animation when activating his sniping attack between the vanilla and Final Mix versions. I guess the updated animation is to more so make it look like Zigbar is transforming his arrow guns into an actual sniper rifle, whereas the original animation looks just a tad awkward, the updated one definitely suits the attack he's about to pull off. Now the last thing that I want to talk about here is playing Kingdom Hearts again at 30 frames per second. Man, this was absolutely jarring. For the past few years now, past five actually, we've been used to playing all of the Kingdom Hearts games at 60 frames per second. I will say, still to this day, it kind of confuses me that the original PlayStation 3 versions of 1.5 and 2.5 ran at 30 frames per second, when a lot of the HD remasters of that generation ran at 60 frames. I strongly believe that the PS3 was more than capable of running Kingdom Hearts at 60. Uh, it's kind of weird that it took the PlayStation 4 re-releases to finally get the 60 FPS versions. Now obviously this isn't a Final Mix exclusive feature, the 2007 PS2 version wasn't 60 frames or anything like that, but just talking about how we used to play Kingdom Hearts at 30 frames, going back to that is incredibly jarring. Kingdom Hearts is an action RPG, these kinds of games where they're running in real time, it's very action orientated, benefit strongly the higher the frame rate. I will say though that, yeah, at first it is jarring and it's a little bit strange going from what I'm used to, 60 frames, down to 30 frames. Uh, everything seems sort of sluggish and I would describe it as being quite heavy. But I will say that like Kingdom Hearts has a very smooth and obviously consistent 30 frame frame rate. And just in case you guys are wondering, I am playing this via PCSX2, that way I can get the increased resolution so it looks a little bit more crisp than playing it via a normal PlayStation 2. I haven't experienced playing any of the Kingdom Hearts games at 30 frames per second in like years, absolute years, because even when I was originally emulating KH2, I did apply a 60 FPS hack, meaning that when I was playing KH2 Final Mix, it was running at 60 frames, even though it was the PlayStation 2 version. It is something that you do adjust to though over time like by about the three hour mark I was used to 30 frames per second is probably most noticeable during the gummy ship segments in all honesty uh, dashing around the screen with the gummy ship and just controlling it in general feels incredibly heavy but what was really strange was then going back to the PlayStation 4 version then playing that at 60 frames on an HD TV was like 
my god, I had discovered fire for the first time. It was absolutely incredible. It's kind of strange how your brain gets so used to seeing a certain frame rate, going back to one, then adjusting, and then going back to another version, and it being like, okay, I'm tripped out again. But that right there, guys, is revisiting the original vanilla version of Kingdom Hearts 2 and comparing the differences between that original version to the extended Final Mix version. Hopefully you guys have found this interesting and have maybe learned something new. I hope for those of you who played the original version growing up, this has brought a little bit of nostalgia soup into your daily diet. As always guys, do let me know your thoughts and opinions, I'd love to know. However guys, I'm cynical, hopefully having a fantastic day, and I'll catch you guys real soon. Peace.